Hello, hello, hello. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about creating intimacy with your cycle and creating intimacy while on your cycle. Now, ladies, have you ever felt the need to power through your period? Meaning, have you ever ignored the symptoms? Have you ever pushed through it? Have you ever loaded your to-do list full of things, even though you felt like laying down, taking a nap, or doing nothing at all? So all of these are variations of ways we've learned to treat ourselves while we're going through a very sacred ceremony. And I never saw my period as a sacred ceremony until probably the last five or so years. In fact, for many years of my life, I saw my period as a hindrance, a burden, something that I would anticipate and it would get in the way of things like being productive, having sex. And so I saw it as something that I had to put up with and withstand. And unfortunately, we're not taught how to harness the power that we generate during that time, during our bleed, during our menstrual cycle. And so on today's episode, I want to talk all about that. And this came to me, this practice of creating a spiritual practice came to me through a book that I highly recommend to anyone called Wild Power. And this book is by Alexandra Pope and... um, I always mispronounce her name, (laughs) Shawnee Hugo Wurlitzer. And it is discovering the magic of your menstrual cycle and awaking the feminine path to power. Now let's talk for a moment about this feminine path to power because we are living in a time where we're seeing the feminine rise up. Not only the feminine as depicted by female embodied people, but the feminine energy within us all. And when we think of feminine energy, we think of attributes like creativity, nourishment, rest and replenishment, openness, receiving, surrender. These are all the qualities that help balance the masculine, which are qualities like being direct, precise, logical, analytical, achieving. And so when we strike a balance, we generally find the highest amounts of harmony within ourselves, within our environment around us. And it's quite clear that we've been living in a time where there has been a complete imbalance, both within ourselves as individuals and in our larger environment in the world. And so creating intimacy with our menstrual cycles as women allows us to reclaim an inherent and innate power. And that's the power of intuition, the power of inner guidance, the power of wisdom. These are things that we've left behind because we've been in pursuit of money, success, accolades, and there's nothing wrong with those things. However, we have really overdeveloped our masculine attributes and there's no balance. And so That's exactly where I was before in my life prior to learning about this practice, prior to creating a practice of my own. And I want to talk a little bit about what life looked like before and what I do now and what my life looks like as a result, because this is a practice that I share with all of my private clients. And I basically sing it from the rooftops. I recommended this book to so many people and it is, um, it's really mind blowing. Um, I'll also put the book title and links to it in the show notes for your reference. So before I created any sort of awareness around my menstrual cycle, I was in New York City doing the corporate hustle, waking up early, going to bed late, working long hours, working myself out hard at the gym, and there was really no variation And it didn't matter where I was in the month on my cycle. And so whether I was bleeding or ovulating, there was still this hard pressed need or perceived need, I should say, to do all the things, to get it done, to roll up my sleeves, to prove myself, to achieve, accomplish, and overcome. Now that was uh, a hyper-masculine part of my life 
And again, I'll say that I love my masculine energy. It is here in abundance. And I feel so much more balanced and relaxed and in joy now that I've welcomed my feminine attributes a space at the table. And so what this often looked like is I could wake up on certain mornings while menstruating and I would just push myself through things. Even if I wanted to relax on the couch for a bit or watch Netflix, I would convince myself that I needed to do otherwise because at that time, my sense of worth was tied to what I produced. And so I very rarely gave myself any space to just be, to be with my body, to put my hands on my womb, to ask myself what I needed, to take a bath, to not go out that day. And that led to a lot of stress. It led to severe health issues because I was so tied up in that lifestyle that I rarely recognized my emotional state. There was no place during that time in my life for my emotions or to feel anything other than productive, outgoing, outward facing. And so when I did come up against feelings of sadness, despair, grief, or anger, I pushed them down immediately and I pushed them away. And what I've learned while taking on this practice of tracking my menstrual cycle and creating intimacy with all of my cycles is that there's space for everything. And I get to be with and be in relationship with all parts of me. And I've never felt more in joy, more balanced, more accepting of all of my emotional range. And in fact, I'm learning now that I have a huge emotional range, something that I never acknowledged before. And it is a part of reclaiming that inner wild woman, the wild woman who has highs and lows and ups and downs, and who speaks her mind, and who's resolute in her truth. The wild woman who is also gentle and nurturing and loves cuddles. The one who won't stand for bullshit. The one who wants to give love. The one who wants to receive love. This is the full spectrum woman. And this is what this practice has helped me reclaim within myself. And that's exactly what I help clients reclaim. And so I want to share more about uh, some of the concepts that Alexandra and Shani share in the book. And I also want to share about what I track and what my life looks like now as a result of taking back my wild power. So what I love about this book is that it's for everyone, whether you're a woman or not, whether you're still experiencing a menstrual cycle or not. This book is all about being in sync with seasons. And it might be seasons that our body naturally goes through if you are a menstruating woman. It might be seasons based on the moon, cycles of the moon. And it might be seasons as in our, our seasons that happen throughout the year. We are all cyclical beings, no matter who we are. We are ruled by cycles and seasons. And so when we can find seasonal fluctuations and when we can see patterns and embrace them and take rest when we need rest, be outward facing when it feels good for us, it allows us to really maximize our energy and reserve our energy and to live a life that's more optimal for who we are as humans. So they um, track in the book the cycles to the seasons. So menstruation, we'll start there. That is such a powerful place to be as a woman. And there is a real opportunity for us to reclaim that within ourselves, the power of our menstrual cycle. That is winter. And so as we know, winter is a time when we go inward. And women's superpowers during this time are the power of detachment, literally turning off from the outside world, going within into a sense of hibernation, creating a sense of stillness, finding that inner connection, receiving self-love and receiving love and nurturing from others, and really connecting back to our inner guidance and instruction. Now, this is a great time, ladies, to start to understand what your needs are. So, you know, so often we put our needs on the back burner for our families, our children, our partners, our work, the world around us. And during certain parts of our, our cycle, that feels great. 
for example, during ovulation. It feels great. We feel like Wonder Women. We're invincible. And it's not meant to be that way all month long. So winter or menstruation is a great time to go inward, to start asking, what is it that I need? How do I want to be supported? How do I want to be nurtured and loved and taken care of? And from whom can I make those requests? Maybe it's a request for myself about taking a nap instead of powering through five more emails. Maybe it's a request from our partners, our children, our loved ones. So that's a really good time to go in and reflect and really connect to the inner guidance and inner wisdom that is there always. And our tasks or the things to really be mindful of during this time are claiming space for ourselves. So really taking up a sense of space, turning off the outside world and going within, letting go and taking rest, letting go of the things that we just aren't going to complete during that time, taking a lot of rest and replenishment and nurturing ourselves. So this is really the time to amp up the things that we might not do during the month, like taking long luxurious baths, laying down instead of doing a hard workout, um, and really again, making requests for our needs. Now, I'm finding that even as I'm on my cycle right now, I'm in day three of my bleed, there are certain moments where I do wanna do a strength training workout or where I do wanna be outward facing and record a podcast. This is simply a time to ask what feels best for us right now? What feels most aligned? There are certainly certain periods where I don't wanna have anything to do with the world. So it's really about creating that two-way communication with our bodies to see what feels most aligned versus what do we think we need to do because we should, should be, I use in air quotes, we should be productive or should be getting things done. So then we move into springtime. So from winter, we go to spring, and this is our pre-ovulatory period. And our superpowers as women during this time are being tender, being curious and playful. If you can imagine an animal awakening from hibernation, the birds come out again and they're chipper and singing. This is a time where we have more of a sense of surging energy and life flowing through us. Our sexual desire and even emotional desire starts to ramp up, ramp up as we become alive again. We have an increased sense of enthusiasm, positivity, and even assertiveness. And our tasks in our feminine and sacred initiation during this time are to contain and cherish. It's so tempting sometimes to want to awaken from the slumber of menstruation and winter and want to be back out in the world immediately. And the thing here is there are certain things that we can hold for ourselves as sacred during this time as we slowly awaken back into spring. And the challenge here is to not take your foot off the brake too fast, to slowly accelerate from menstruation into the pre-ovulatory period and to awaken back into spring slowly. So containing our energy, cherishing any breakthroughs we had. And then of course, getting back into play and taking some really great risks again. Then we move into summer, which is our ovulatory period. And most women hail this time. I know for me as a woman who loves my masculine energy, I love my ovulatory period and I love the season of summer. It is one of my favorite seasons. It is a time to be out and about in the world to be outward facing, bubbly and gregarious. We have a lot of visibility during this time. Generally, we're more optimistic and we take charge. This is when the Wonder Woman comes back. The part of us that can zoom around the house, clean and organize, make dinner, get her work done, and take a shower and be in bed by 10 p.m. and feel great. This is a great time to declare ourselves to be outward in the world. And if there's a mission we're on, if there's something we wanna share, this is the time to do it. It's also time to take our foot off the brake and to take pleasure in things and enjoy. A lot of women experience sexual desire during this time because it's, it's the time when we're most fertile. And so it's a time to notice 
how we can put ourselves out there in the world and how we can take risks. Now, the challenge here is to not overdo it because so many of us, myself included, you know, I thought for many years that I had to sustain this kind of energy, this kind of momentum, and this kind of forward focus during my entire cycle. And if I didn't, then I wasn't worthy. I was worthless. I was unproductive or I was useless. And that's just not the truth. This is a time where we can really embrace our visibility and our outward focus, knowing that we're going to enter into autumn, which is when we start to quiet down. And we notice that in the seasons around us. When we head into autumn, we start to bundle up more. We start to wrap our scarves around us and drink warm beverages. We start to go inward more. And so embrace the ovulatory period for what it is and know that it's not meant to be how we show up for the whole month. And so now we move into autumn, which is our premenstrual time. And our superpowers here are powers of insight, of saying no, because we know we're going to head into menstruation again. So taking things off of our calendar and off our plates that aren't absolutely necessary or aren't in alignment with what we're trying to create during that time. This is also a time to hold the tension, the tension of the impending menstruation, the impending sacredness of our bleed, and to hold the tension and discomfort around maybe not being able to do it all or not choosing to do it all. We also find during this time that we become speakers of truth, right? This is a time when some women experience uh, PMS or premenstrual symptoms. This is also a time where it can be really powerful to lose it or just fucking let it go because we're so we're so hell-bent most of the time, or so taught to hold it together and to be presentable. This is a time in your own sacred and contained way to let that shit go. Of course, be mindful of where you're letting it go and with whom you're letting it go, and create a sacred contained space to really just let yourself rip. Now, the tasks or um, you know things to be mindful of during this time are facing ourselves. So facing yourself, because this is the time when the inner critic usually comes out. And so this is a time when we can clean up our act. So when things are out of alignment, when there are things that we want to adjust or shift, this is a time to really get clear on what that is and to be honest, because we truth speak with ourselves during our premenstrual time. It's also a great time to stay present and really start to ask what we need, what our body needs as we or in our premenstrual time and as we head into menstruation. And it's a time to be discerning. And so some of the challenges that arise here are going slowly. This is a time to really start to take the foot off the gas. It's a time to create space between our feelings and our actions. So again, coming back to that discernment. And so this is what our cycles look like as mapped to seasons, as mapped to different parts of our month. And it's so beautiful to stop and think, oh my gosh, I don't have to be going zero to 100 all the time. Our bodies as women are so intelligent in letting us know that there's a time for being out in the world and there's a time for going inward. And this is something that men don't experience in the same way. And so if you are a woman who is no longer experiencing her menstrual cycle or experiences variable menstrual cycles, or if you're a man who's listening to this, you can very easily also track your cycles or you can track um, and create cycles according to the moon calendar, the lunar calendar. And you can also intuitively go inward and create your own set of cycles based on events that you have coming up, how you're feeling. We all have this innate sense of great wisdom within and connection to our bodies that when we create space for those messages to come through, our body will definitely tell us what it needs that day. So I wanna talk a little bit about what I track as I practice menstrual cycle awareness, which is what Alexandra and Shani created through the Red School. Um, And I want to talk about what the impact of tracking my cycle is and what my life looks like now. 
So I track every day of my cycle. I write a short little blurb in my journal and I track by day. So day one starts the first day of your bleed and it goes all the way through the end of your cycle to day 28 to 35, depending on how your cycle plays out. So my cycle usually lasts anywhere from 26 to 28 days before it starts over again. And when I start my period, which I started two days ago, that became day one. And I track things like mood, cravings, if I experience breakouts on my face, uh, my sexual desires, any dreams that I had, any daydreams that I have, what I'm excited about that day, how I'm feeling emotionally, um, what I want to create in the world. So you can track anything you want, but I really love tracking things that allow me to see the patterns play out throughout the month. Sometimes I'll also track uh, any pain or sensation I might be feeling in my body, the color and consistency of my blood. Um, and these are just really awesome data points to see how our bodies shift and change. And if you are experiencing symptoms that uh, could be cause for concern that you speak to a doctor about, it's also helpful to bring this kind of information to them because it informs how they serve and support you. Um, and so I track this every day and I freaking love tracking it. I feel so much closer to myself as a woman, as a being. I feel so much more in tune with my body. I feel so much more connected to my intuition and wisdom. And in fact, tracking this helps me really reconcile what my needs are in any given moment on any given day, which is something I struggled so much to understand in years past. And because I'm aware of my needs now, I'm able to share that with my partner and with other people. And so I've created a space to practice in making requests of my partner because during the month, I'm usually in love with cleaning and organizing around the home. And I know that when I'm in autumn or my premenstrual time, I can start to make requests for him to take on some of those tasks that I usually love doing. And he's so happy to, to oblige and serve me in that way because I can so clearly communicate what's coming up for me instead of letting it cause issues in communication, instead of turning up in a moody way because I don't, I'm not getting my needs met. This allows me to empower myself in creating what I need to be in joy and be at ease. And so if you're a woman who has struggled to understand your needs, to speak your needs, to get them met, menstrual cycle awareness through what they share in wild power can really serve you powerfully in creating that. Now, I also do this kind of work with my private clients as I take them through my Untamed Intimacy program. So if you're interested in learning about this, in addition to creating powerful communication habits and really creating intimacy with yourself and in your partnership, then drop me a note. I would love to talk more about how I can serve you. Now, what I'm also finding in my life after having this practice and creating a daily ritual out of it, because it really does become a beautiful ceremony for me, is that I'm able to align my work schedule with my cycle. So because I have a regular cycle, I block off time on my work calendar when I'm going to be in my premenstrual and menstrual time. And I'm really sure to not overbook myself with outside meetings, with going places, with doing things. I really keep those kinds of meetings to my, my springtime, which is pre-ovulation, and my summertime, which is ovulation. And then anything in the premenstrual and menstrual time, I play by ear, depending on how I'm feeling that week or that day. And so I create my work and my life around these beautiful cycles, and it really helps me to not overdo it, to not feel burnt out, to feel replenished, and to approach everything I do with ease and joy because nobody wants to show up to a meeting begrudgingly hating that they're there when it's a meeting that's really going to help move their business forward. I want to show up to my client calls to my meetings with joy, with ease. And I also am able to understand, you know, if I am bleeding and I'm in a client meeting, then I can show up in a much gentler way. I can bring a different sense of my femininity to my client that day 
And I trust that that's exactly what she needed, is that she needed gentleness. And so there is a real divine wisdom and uh, intelligence in being aware of where we're at in our cycle and showing up in accordance with that in a way that gets our needs met in a way that's authentic and genuine. So I can't recommend this more, menstrual cycle awareness, creating intimacy with your cycle and getting to know your cycle in a new way. And in fact, that leads me to the last point here, which is creating intimacy while on your cycle. And so I found that because I track my cycle and I have so much intimacy with my cycle, I'm able to communicate so much more clearly and deeply with my partner. And that allows us to explore so many different kinds of intimacy throughout the month, whether that's intimacy through cuddling, through taking a bath together, through giving each other massages, through having sex, through exploring kink, through exploring fantasy. Because I'm so aware of where I'm at and what my body needs, I'm able to communicate what I desire and what is on the table for me, what is off the table for me at given parts of my cycle. And so this can be a way to really step back from the box that we've put ourselves in, which is, quote, women are bitchy when they're PMSing and they're inaccessible when they're on their period to, hey, you know what, babe? I would love if you could rub some essential oils on my tummy. And I would love to feel your sensual touch over my body because my body's feeling tender today and I'm feeling emotional today. Imagine making that kind of request because you're so in tune with your needs instead of creating separation and disconnection when that might not truly be what you want. Now, don't get me wrong. There are some times during my cycle where I want to really be alone. So I want to be in isolation. But to be able to discern between the the true desire for that and, you know, what I thought I needed to do to push someone away just so I could get some space to myself because I couldn't meet my needs are two very different things. And having that discernment can really, really empower you in showing up as the wonder woman that you are in showing up as the gentle lover that you are in showing up as the femme fatale that you are and in showing up as the high priestess that you are. So if any of this really calls to you, I invite you to check out the book, Wild Power. Drop me a line. Let me know what really resonated for you and let me know where you're having challenges. I'd love to serve and support in any way I can. Until next time, sending you all much love and good vibes.